I hope that that part's on. <laughs> we just stare at the camera. We're live. All right. So the camera says we're live, but this is always the... Whoops, this is going to look kind of weird for a second. Sorry about that, everybody. I shouldn't play around with this while we're live. That's better. Luckily, nobody's joined us yet, so that's good. Okay. Uh, so in just a, seconds from now, thousands of people from all over the globe will be watching us live. But right now, we're just alone. Is it just us? <laughs> right now, it's just us. Oh, no, now there's a bunch of okay. people already. Okay. So that's good. Uh, not thousands, but still, you know, 16 is almost thousands. Hey, everyone, my name is Johnny. I'm a believer. I struggle with alcoholism and codependency. With me tonight... My name is Megan. I'm a believer in I'm recovery for codependency, perfectionism, and compulsive behaviors. And on the other side of the camera, we have Marnie. Marnie, say hi. Hello. And... Um, Oh, wow. Somebody from Kenya is joining us. That's wow. pretty awesome. Thanks for being with us. Wow. And uh, as you do come on, if you want to let us know where you're from, that would be great. But don't forget to ask some questions because <laughs> it's hard for us to answer questions if you don't ask them. So very scientific. That is, very that scientific. Is true. Um, we were talking about before we went live that it, tomorrow is leap. Day? Day, like what do you call it? Is it leap year? Is it well? It's a leap, leap year, year because of tomorrow, but is tomorrow leap day? Right. We now, don't know. Now but... my question is, and I know somebody will answer this question. This if is very you don't. exciting. Okay. If you're born on leap day, yes. And you have, like, are you really only technically five years old? Well, you know like that was the whole plot of Pirates of Penzance. You know that was the whole plot. Of, of course I do, because I know what that is. <laughs> There are people out there who know what Pirates of Penzance is. But yeah, no, the, you only get your birthday uh -huh. on the 29th, but right. you're still your years count. Right, okay. You're yeah. just. I mean. So, like, you. All right. I just wonder. I wonder these things because somebody was talking about it today and I just don't know. So, uh, anyway, uh, we would like better questions than the than question that I one just I... asked. But if you have fun questions like that, that's fine too. You might be watching this the first time and you're like, I don't know what's happening right now. That's totally fair. Uh, this is a weekly deal that we um, do every Friday night at 6 o'clock Pacific, 9 o'clock Eastern. And then it's on our Facebook page and our YouTube page after that. We do it every week. We're part of a ministry called Celebrate Recovery, which is in over 30,000 churches all over the world. And it helps people recover from their hurts, hangups, and habits, no matter what they are. And uh, so if you're watching for this for the first time, uh, we're glad you're here. And um, we're going to talk about that mm -hmm. and uh, some other things that go along with that. Um, if you've been joining us for a while now, you know that we often talk about our one-day training conferences and our summits. We do have a bunch of one-day training conferences coming up in March. We've got, uh, this is not going to be in order, I don't think, but we've got Lansing, Michigan. We've got Seattle, Washington. We've got Washington, D.C. We've got, uh, after that, the Atlanta area and um, one more that I can't think of. Oh, Colorado Springs. Look that's that. pretty impressive. And um, so if you're in any of those areas and you want to come to a training event, if you're looking to start or grow a Celebrate Recovery, we would love to see you there. Go to CelebrateRecovery.com for more information. Yeah. All right. So, Marnie, do we have any questions we yet? We do. Um, what should we do if our step study is taking more than two hours because we have a large group? Great question. So, Very step studies question. are... Uh, one of the three different groups that we do in Celebrate Recovery where we go through the participant guides. Um, and they do take about two hours mm -hmm. to comp uh, per night, about a year long. Uh, we meet once a week to do that. So, Megan, what, what do we do? Well, you want to honor the time commitment for sure, always. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's beneficial to <coughs> stop where you are and continue the next week. Mm -hmm. With a large group, depending on what large means, because it can mean different things to right. different people, we have very large groups here at Saddleback, mm -hmm. very large, extremely large. And so what we did is we kept them to, to a number we thought was manageable. Mm -hmm. So we capped it at 25, with 25 people sharing their answers. Um, the first three lessons we broke up into two meetings, mm -hmm. but then beyond that, it, you can you can get it done in in one meeting. Right. So um, I would recommend you you're supposed to stop when you stop. Uh, one thing that can happen though is if people aren't necessarily reading what they wrote and they're going off script quite a bit, and yeah. it's becoming an open share it, to to guide people back to the format of a step study, which is, hey, we do the work before we get to step study. Doesn't mean you have to only read what you write, but it has to be about what right. you have written. Right. So yep. that would be my recommendation. Yeah, and one of the things is we have guidelines, and one of the guidelines is that we keep our sharing 
uh, three to five minutes. And so what we would do is go around the circle and figure out how many people do you have and how many questions you're gonna try to answer. Mm -hmm. And so how many minutes are is everyone going to get? Now, three to five minutes, mm -hmm. five is the cap, the most you should give anybody. But that doesn't mean that everybody has yeah. to have three. Um, so you may wanna say, you know what, tonight we're gonna do these in two minutes each. Mm -hmm. And if you're like Megan said, if you're doing your homework ahead of time, that shouldn't be that hard, even if you're a bullet pointer. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have not, we're, we're not suggesting that you can only read what you've right. written down. Right. But even if you bullet point, it's still not gonna take you more than two minutes to really kind of go through those things. Um, and what I suggest is set a timer, whether it's an egg timer or the timer on your phone, set a timer, have a timekeeper who's responsible to keep the time for each mm -hmm. person, and just tell everybody you're gonna get two minutes. So would you please set the timer for two minutes? And when it goes off as a leader, you simply say, please wrap up your share. Yep. And then you can move on to the next one. And there's some other things you can do as well. One thing that we've done is we'll say like, hey, you get two minutes, but you're gonna answer questions one, two, and three mm. in those two minutes. And so, you know, right. sometimes the material, um, the, the questions can be similar enough. Right. To where they're kind of comparing or contrasting mm -hmm. or they kind of bat, they kind of build on each other and it makes sense to do it that way. Right. Where you can say, you know. it's asking the same thing, but in a different way. Right, right. And I or, think, too, a longer share doesn't mean a deeper share. Right. right? It's, it's not like right. I'm getting more out of step study if I'm sharing for all five minutes. It's God can do an amazing thing in a, in a very short yes. period of yeah. time. Before we go to the next question, I have to um, just sort of um, address something that happened a couple weeks ago on um, Facebook Live and I think it's kind of been taken out of context so it was one where I was by myself kind of trying to juggle questions and, and everything uh, live which can be really hard um, and so uh, somebody asked can they invite other CR groups to be trained by them and I said yes because the way I thought they meant the question was we have a monthly leaders meeting mm. and we extend an invitation to other celebrate recoveries to attend our monthly leaders mm -hmm. meeting, which to me, that I have no problem with. I think that if you have a monthly leaders meeting and there's other CRs mm -hmm. around, you wanna say, hey, we are all gonna get together, no problem. Mm -hmm. What you can't do is train other groups if they don't have a Celebrate Recovery going. And while you can meet with them and you can help them and you can point them in the right direction, inviting them to come to a training event, let's say on a Saturday mm -hmm. or something where mm -hmm. you're gonna train them mm -hmm. how to do it, that's why we do our one day training conferences and it's also why we have our state reps. Our state reps can help them do that um, in, a, in a way where they've been trained and they really know kind of the, the how to do that and what to do there. And so I believe your heart's in the right place if you're trying to do something like that, but that's just one of the things that we ask you not to do. Um, so hope that clears things up because I know there's been some chatter about that. Oh, and, okay. and when I said yes, I really meant you know, we do that from time to time, right? We have other right. groups who will attend will our yeah, monthly leaders, leaders meeting and, and especially hang out if it's, with us. Yeah, and if it's beneficial and things like right. that. And even as a state rep, when I had churches that were by each other and mm -hmm. they wanted to like get together and stuff, that's great. You want to build community and right. you can, if your state rep isn't available, you can ask someone for advice. But if you're looking for like how to train, how to do this, right. what the guidelines are, what DNA looks like, right. that's where the state rep helps keep it. So any Celebrate Recovery we go to anywhere in the country or in the world is going to be consistent. Right. Because you might be doing that great and you might be doing it by the book, right. following the right. DNA, using the seven keys, but another group might not be. But they might be saying they're Celebrate mm -hmm. Recovery, mm -hmm. but they might be changing things and all that kind of stuff. And now that church that group isn't going to be as safe because really what it boils down to is safety. Absolutely. And if the groups are going to work, if your celebrate recovery is going to be successful, it has to be safe. Mm -hmm. So that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. All right. So after that tangent, Marty, do we have any other questions? Yeah. No, this is really important one. Um, Grace Hope is saying this may be silly, but how does this work? Celebrate recovery. Great question. Oh, such a good question. Great question. Why don't you start, up, start us off with that? I think you should. So I could have done this by myself. I guess just kidding. Grace Celebrate Recovery is a um, it's a meet it's a, a ministry that really helps us in a systematic way, one day at a time, move past some of our hurts, hangups, and habits into freedom. And the way that it works is a step by step process. So if you attend a Celebrate Recovery, if you were to come to our Celebrate Recovery here at Saddleback, if you were here, if you were to come here tonight you would um, come to what we call large group. And in large group, we're gonna have some worship time because we're a Christ-centered recovery ministry and worship allows us to, 
begin to have that communication with God. Uh, tonight you'd actually hear a lesson from Megan, and then um, after that we break up into our different groups that take um, that we call our open share groups, and those are gender specific and recovery issue specific. So one out of three people who attend Celebrate Recovery come from for drugs or alcohol issues. The rest of, of everybody comes for a whole host of other issues. And so we break up into those other issues, whether it's food issues, adult mm -hmm. children and family dysfunction, um, our sexual addiction group. Um, mm -hmm. What are some other ones I'm thinking Did of? Did you say codependency, anger? Codependency, anger, all, all those different areas. And so you're gonna split up over campus and that's what we call our open share groups. Those groups last an hour and they're open because anybody can come and also you can share about whatever you really want to during your three to five mm -hmm. minutes following the guidelines. Then if you wanted to take it deeper, you could join a step study, which we talked about a little bit earlier, but that's kind of how it works. But I think your question is why does it work and mm -hmm. why does this work? And the number one reason is that we're a Christ-centered recovery ministry and Jesus is the reason that we can find healing and freedom over our hurts, hangups, and habits. Not just over one area of recovery, but complete recovery and complete life change. One day at a time, one step at a time, and it's not going to be automatic, but He has the power to help do things in our lives that we don't have the power to do. And so the number one reason it works is because we everybody is invited to have a personal relationship with him as their higher power and then there's some other things about it that i think really um the kind of the secrets and one of them is that we talk to each other we share with each other and so often we keep the most important things that we really need to talk about bottled up and we have a saying in celebrate recovery that you're as sick as your secrets and so I think one of the reasons Celebrate Recovery works is that we ask you in a safe environment where your confidentiality mm -hmm. is going to be upheld to tell people those, say, those secrets, to tell people those things that are keeping you stuck. The Bible says that we're slaves of anything that's mastered us. And so for many of, that, of, of us, it can be a habit, it can be something that we do, but it also can just be something that I feel like I can't talk about or I'll get yelled at, or I'll get judged, or I'll get thrown out, or I'll get laughed at, or whatever that may be. Um, and so why does it work? Well, number one, we have a relationship with Christ, and He has the power to help us change. And then two, I think that we have relationships with each other, and we can encourage each other, we can hold each other up. And as we go down this road to recovery, we can find long-lasting life change. Is there anything yeah. you want to add? Well, I think you, you're using the term hurts, hangups, and habits. And I think that is, that's kind of our, <clears throat> that's our rally cry here right. at Celebrate Recovery. And the thing about that is, is that we all have hurts in our lives. Every single, if you are alive, you have been hurt in some way or hurt others. And that, those hurts, if we don't authentically walk through them with Jesus, right. we can get hung up. And when we're hung up, that can definitely lead to destructive habits. So right. when we're talking about that, many people think it, it looks a certain way, but sometimes it can manifest in control. Right. It can manifest in just a lack of peace or anxiety. And so there's, I mean, we, we say everyone could use Celebrate Recovery. Yeah, I mean, unashamedly so. Yes. I think everybody, you know, you might go, I don't really know why I would come. That's fine. Come. I didn't, I didn't know why out. when right. I came. <laughs> right. And now look at it. Look at and me. So <laughs> But yeah, you know, you may not you may not identify with something that we just mentioned, but mm -hmm. you know, the reality of it is is that we all like you said, we've all hurt people mm -hmm. and we've all been hurt by other people. So even if you say, "Man, I don't know exactly why I would want to come." Right. Just to, you know, cuz the the secret is, by the way, for those who are in kind of church circles, that Celebrate Recovery is really a spiritual discipleship program. Right. It really helps us grow closer to the person of Jesus Christ and we get to our lives become more like his now we're never going to be like him mm -hmm. but we can become more like him and and that happens on a journey it happens one day at a time mm -hmm. one step at a time and really this 12 steps and eight principles work in a systematic way to help us get there yeah. and so um grace i hope you would check it out and if you go to celebraterecovery.com you can click on find a group and you can find a church in your area you can search by zip code to attend there. If you're in the Lake Forest or California area, we'd love for you to come join us that. on a Friday night. Yeah. yeah. Great. What else? There's a lot of discussion on how old their celebrate recoveries are, and I just wanted to let you know that there is a four week old and a five week old. So there's oh, some that's really awesome. That's that awesome. So awesome. Yes. That's very cool. Yeah. So glad that you're so glad that you're doing that. Mm -hmm. As you just get started, just know there's gonna be ups and downs mm -hmm. that just like recovery, personal recovery can be hard, so can ministry, but it's so worth it. Yeah. 
And um, I would just encourage you as leaders of some of these younger CR ministries to encourage each other mm -hmm. and to tell each other, again, with keeping anonymity and confidentiality, mm -hmm. but just telling each other when you hear of victories, when things are, yeah. when things are, are going the right way. Um, just encourage, like hold each other up in that because it's yeah, really important. Absolutely. That's very cool. And your state rep too. Don't forget yeah. to reach out to your state rep who's there to help you, especially those brand new Celebrate Recoveries because there's yeah. things that you don't know until you know. Yep. So. Very cool. What else, Marnie? So um, Chelsea is asking, what about international groups? Uh, going back to the first question, here in Australia, we don't have training days. So Yeah, mm. yeah so uh, you, you're right. But we do have some reps in Australia. And I realize Australia is a very small country. So that's very, just kidding. I know it's huge. <laughs> it's just, that was a joke. But, uh, but we do have some reps in Australia. And we have an international director. His name is Richard Cobb. <clears throat> and somebody who's in the comments one of our national team members can drop his uh email in there in case he's not watching live and um and you i would encourage you to contact him um to help connect you with some churches that do celebrate recovery uh in australia we do try to get to international areas as often as we can but we do have a pretty small team mm -hmm. we just sent a group to brazil and then we're, we've got a group in costa rica yeah, right so now costa from, rica. Our, from, yeah, our, from our, church, our local church who's there local now piece, yeah. um but uh you know and and my wife Jenny and I keep volunteering that to go to Australia. We'll, 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 we'll go do that. Happen. So, but also there is the advanced leaders training, right. which is a resource that it's really like a one-time resource that you don't have to right. keep buying things. It is how to do celebrate recovery, and if you don't have, it's so great to be taught by you guys and to be trained by you. But you can know that you're within the DNA right. with that particular resource. Yep. Yeah. Great. What else, Marnie? They're sending you invites. I know. I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. I yes. love that. And St. Kitts, by the way, top of the list. Yeah, so right? seriously. Um, Jennifer is asking, if we have visited another Celebrate Recovery group and experienced an unsafe group, should we contact the state rep and let them know? A hundred percent you should. Yep. Yep. In the and, spirit of love. Right. In the spirit of love yep. and helping. Because sometimes people don't know that their group is unsafe. Right. So it's not tattling. It's helping. Yep. And then the second follow-up to that would be is if you contact your state rep and they take action or mm -hmm. they go visit that group and then you later go and you find that it's still unsafe, I would just encourage you that that may not that doesn't fall on the state rep right. that they didn't do their job. They might be working with them. They might be trying to get them to come mm -hmm. alongside. And we don't want to just say to a group, well, you're not following the DNA, so you can't be called Celebrate Recovery. We're right. really going to try to work with a group um, to, to kind of bring them in line. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, I think if you go to a group and you're like, man, this is an unsafe place. They're, right. they're breaking the DNA or right. they're doing this or doing that. Please let your state rep know so that they can get involved. Yeah. Yeah. Great. What else, Marnie? So, just so you know, we've got a lot of Australians on tonight. Awesome! Oh, and awesome! Brazil, and you know, so just and, I love that. Uh, Canada. Very uh, cool. Marty Smith is asking: When introducing yourself, how many struggles do you or should you mention oh, at I one love time? This one, I yeah. love this one. So, my personal preference, and you need to hear that personal preference, mm -hmm. is two. So. For me, the reason is, is that it keeps it short mm -hmm. and it doesn't overwhelm the newcomer when they hear me identify. Um, so uh, this, again, the reason why I keep saying personal preference mm -hmm. is this isn't DNA. If I come to your group and, and you're doing five or six, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say, you can't be called celebrate recovery. Mm -hmm. But I would say to you, here's why, here's why. So for me, it's two. And what my favorite is, what brought me here and what I'm currently working mm -hmm. on. So I started attending Celebrate Recovery to, to work on my alcoholism issues. Mm -hmm. I've been sober for over 15 years. So while I still identify as a believer who struggles with alcoholism, because if I ever think that I don't struggle right. with it anymore, then why do I do this? And I can just go ahead and drink because I've beaten it, You're, yeah, right? You're so good. I go right back to that. But I don't daily, I don't think, I mean, don't drink today. Mm -hmm. I didn't wake up this morning and go, I just hope I don't drink today. I won't go to bed and I go, thank God I didn't drink today. Mm -hmm. I don't think about it anymore. Mm -hmm. But I also identify as a believer who struggles with codependency because although I've had over 15 years of sobriety from codependency, I've got about 15 minutes worth of recovery in okay. codependency. So whatever. <laughs> so so the, whole, the whole thing with that is that we... Um, so for me, what brought me here, why, what I'm still working on. I do know that we've had leaders in the past who have been through, let's say, 10 step studies, right? Because right. RCR is almost 30 years old. So we've had leaders who have been around a long time. Mm -hmm. And they would like to get up there and say every one of the issues they worked on in a step study. 
Yes. But if I'm a newcomer, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. And also, like these people are messed really up. Really messed up. You people, know. Right? So yeah. But so we differ a little bit in this. And, well, I mean, I don't, we don't differ that much. I I will say that if some. <laughs> On this, Johnny, yeah. um, that if someone is up front, when I put someone up front to do the eight principles or the serenity prayer, I, I say it has to be under three, three or under. Yeah. Um, I think for me, there's, you know, like like Johnny, I struggled with alcohol and I had 30 years of sobriety from alcohol and drugs. I don't identify as an alcoholic initially because it was codependency that brought me first to celebrate recovery right. five years ago. But I want to make sure that I have my compulsive behaviors in there, which could include alcohol and drugs at any moment. Right. So for me, I do the codependency, perfectionism, and compulsive behaviors because that's what makes my life unmanageable. Right. And that's kind of how I frame it is when I have people who are, they want to say 15 things. I'm not saying that there aren't those 15 things. Right. What I'm saying, and if it's in step study especially, is what is making your life most unmanageable right now? And that's how we're going to identify. It doesn't take away from the other right. things. Right. One, one last thing I would suggest is to try to be as specific as possible. Yes. So it's, uh, you know, I hear what you're saying with, you know, with the way you identify mm -hmm. it. And I think because it makes so much sense for you. Right. But I've also heard people that will say like, oh, I'm Johnny, an unbeliever who struggles with sin. I get that. I'm like, man, we all do, that. right? Like, be more specific. Right. Name your stuff. Because right. just like, you know, sharing with somebody breaks that power, right. naming it also begins to break that power. But one last thing on this. Be very careful. I, I would encourage you to be very careful with how much you identify with your identification mm -hmm. so yes how we identify is very important we say I'm a believer first or mm -hmm. we at least need to make sure I know some people like to kind of put that at the end mm -hmm. how I don't care about that order but I like my name is Johnny I'm a believer because I think that that's where my identity comes from mm -hmm. is my relationship with Christ I struggle with alcoholism and codependency I'm not an code I'm not a codependent I'm not an alcoholic. Right. I'm a believer who struggles with those things. So I just think I I think how we talk about ourselves right. is very important, and the labels we give ourselves can be very important. And so and words matter. I think right. that's why we talk about this, but also having some freedom in those words. And and I like it flipped, right? I like my name at the end right. because I know when someone's talking. I miss yep. their name. So I always like to have it at the end because totally. otherwise you'll have people go, hi, right? Yep. They don't remember yep. what your name is. Yep. And so, but that kind of stuff, that's not DNA stuff. Not that's preference. Keeping the newcomer in mind yes. and keeping in mind that our words matter. Yeah. And that's that's why we talk about it because yeah. it's not a small thing, but it also isn't the only thing. Yeah, and intentionality is so important mm -hmm. here. So, you know, we've given you our two cents. I'm sure there are people who are like, no, I think you, whatever, fine. like that's fine. My, what I'm saying is, though, is that knowing why, yes. knowing why I'm going to fight you on that, right? Like, mm -hmm. if you're like, you should only be able to say one. If you have a really good reason, all right, we can have a conversation yeah. about it. Um, but tradition, or we've always done it that way, is not a good enough reason. Mm -hmm. But if, but I, and me, what Megan said is so important. Keep the newcomer in mind with all of those things. Now, if you're in a step study or something and you really want to drill down on one mm -hmm. thing and you're trying to save time so you're not going to go through all the different things, right. or on the other side of that, if you really want to go through all those things, that's fine because that's a closed group after a time and, mm -hmm. and, and it's going to be, there aren't newcomers in there. But for us, our group meets on Friday night. I, we just remind everybody who gets on that stage or behind that platform mm -hmm. on Friday night, remember the newcomer, yes. remember the newcomer, remember the newcomer. Yeah. So great. Marty, what else? So kind of on the heels of this, mm -hmm. what if you have somebody who continually comes to small group but doesn't ever identify and it's starting to make the other people in the group feel uncomfortable? So if it's open share group and the person's not identifying um, and it's making you uncomfortable, my very loving response is get over it. <laughs> that uh, was so, be mine. Yeah, and so uh, I say that because I know how I know how important it is to encourage people to identify. I get that. I know how hard it is to have somebody who won't identify. But I also now know that we need to allow people to work their recovery at their pace. And they may not be comfortable identifying yet. Heck, we may have people come to our groups on Friday night who are like, I'd love to identify, but I can't say I'm a believer because right. I haven't made that decision right. to follow Christ. Or I've made the decision to not follow him. Right. 
we still want them in our groups. We still want them in our open share groups. Now, are they gonna to get to speak on stage? No. no. Are they gonna to get to share their testimony? No. Can they go to open share group? Yeah. And so um, one thing I do from time to time when I'm closing a, a, mess, a, a, a lesson is I'll say, hey, I don't know what your next step is, but, and I'll kind of give a few mm -hmm. examples. Mm -hmm. And what I'll say is maybe you've been going to group for a while and you haven't identified I want to encourage you to take that chance tonight mm -hmm. and do that. I allow them to come, allow them to share, and then inter interpersonally, so one on one, before or after group, as you build a relationship with them, yes. explain why it's important that we identify, encourage mm -hmm. them to identify, and if they don't, it's okay. It is because think about I, I've been in a group like that, and I know that there was. It was not just the not identifying, it wasn't the sharing, and then the other women were feeling like they were being vulnerable, and this is, yeah. and I understand that. So yep. when I said yep. that, I'm not at all trying to be um, unkind or not compassionate, because I understand that we want to feel safe in our groups. Right. But I also know that when that person finally decided to identify and share, yeah. we knew that that was 100% God on the move. And that's what's important, is to know we can be uncomfortable. Yeah. If we're, we need to be safe. Right. But we can be uncomfortable. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, I think for a lot of people, suburb recovery is their first experience with church or it's their first experience in a long time with mm -hmm. church. And if we're if we're looking for reasons to tell people they can't come, I think we're going to be reaffirming a lot of their decisions. Now, if they're unsafe people, if they're breaking right. guidelines, especially anonymity and confidentiality, if they're preying on people or <clears> doing <throat> something wrong, that's a totally different thing. But if they're just not identifying yet, or they're not sharing yet, or they're saying pass. Now, I will say if they join a step study. That's a whole different Now we're going to have now. a different That's conversation a different because they've, they've stepped deeper into their recovery. Mm -hmm. And we're going to ask them to step up, identify, and share. Right. Open share group, though, man, I, I'm no, fine with it. We want them to keep coming back. Yeah. All right, Marnie, I think we have time for one more. Um, somebody's asking any plans to update any of the CR lessons. So, uh, any plans to update yeah, any of the talk, CR lessons? We're talking about the leader's guide. DVDs. Oh, DVDs. Sorry. Shoot. Uh, <laughs> you were so happy. Yeah, I was going to so go a different way with that. Uh, I'll just answer it though this way. If you're talking about the leader's guide, no, the leader's guide is DNA, and we really suggest that you use that. Uh, if you're talking about the DVDs, so a couple, a couple, maybe like two years ago, I shot, no, it was like a long time ago, I recorded all 25 lessons on DVD. And yes, there are plans to um, re reshoot them and, and have an updated uh, one of those. Which so, makes me say yay. Yes. So um, with that, now that I'm sweating again, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and, uh, and say goodbye. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. If you're watching this on Facebook and you don't mind sharing it on your page, hit share. Maybe give us a thumbs up. That's always great so more people can find out about Celebrate Recovery. If you're watching this on YouTube later on, if you want to um, subscribe and hit like and maybe even leave a comment, uh, that would be great too. Man, I love this time together. It's such a fun really time that we sweet. get to spend. Yeah. Thanks for joining us from wherever you are. Um, and, you know, we don't take it for granted that you give up a half hour of your Friday um, to come spend time with us. So thank you so much for being with us. And uh, if you're coming to one of the one days or summits, which we didn't even talk about. but There's the so much, that's, there's amazing. so many things yep. to talk about. We will uh, see you there. So uh, anything else to say before you? No, I think All that right. was awesome. Bye, Thanks, everybody. Guys. Thanks. See Bye. Ya.